Here's a little ring back from the year 2000. I'm gonna check it out too. Put a sure switch on this system over the summer because of an ant issue. We're gonna check on that as well. Guys, I checked my capacitor here. It's five. It was registering 4.5, so I'm gonna let it ride. Four banks there. This is what the reams use as a supplementary heat. They have the rods extending down into the blower cabinet. You see, there's four here. We're gonna make sure they come on. Can't see the rest of them because it's kind of inside the cabinet, but it's kind of an interesting idea. And I'm guessing that's what they did to make it a shorter air handler, but it's kind of a pain in the ass as well. Because if your heater goes bad, it presents a whole different level of issues because you can't just pull a heater out and put another one in. As you see, we have 19 amps. Heard a little click, the sequencer. So we have our heat strips are running now. They are functional, which is good. 5kw right there on so we can move on and check the next item i have turned the emergency heat off the sequencer will start to cool it will release you'll see the drop out there we are then the blower will drop out shortly after here's the surf switch i put in here a little bit earlier this year because ants were all over the place looks like the ants have cleared out I'm going to check that run cap, then we'll get hooked up and ready to run the machine. See what the pressures look like in heat. Guys, I have my gauges set up. There's the clamps right there. There's my note where I replaced the sir switch. It was on July 7th. It's our hot gas pressure gauge. We have our hot gas temperature right there. There's our suction gas temperature coming across back from the outdoor coil. And there's our suction pressure. So we're going to turn the machine on, let it run for a few minutes, see how she looks. I do believe I've added refrigerant before on this thing. I don't think it was a whole lot, but we'll see what happens. As you see, we have a temperature of 176, and we have our sink in there. We're almost at the 300 pounds. We're running a little bit hot, a little bit low on air, maybe on the inside. And we're saturation points around right below 130. So we got around almost 50 degrees of superheat, which is a lot. And if you look on here, Discharge superheat will kind of correspond with suction superheat. So we have a high one of one, we'll have a high one of the other. If you have 50 pounds, we have a temperature right below freezing, right around 25. We come over here to our gauges, we're running 72, so we're 50 degrees of superheat, which is not really good. So we might have to try to increase the air speed there, or I don't really think we have a restriction. Uh, the system's run fine for years. More likely, it's uh, maybe a dirty filter in there. We'll go check on that. Make sure the filter's squared away. But as you can see, the discharge superheat coming off the line must be cooled to become condensed liquid refrigerant. The higher the discharge temperature, the higher the superheat, the less refrigerant in the coil, the less likely it is to be able to condense under pressure with the, with the air blowing across it from the outdoor fan. So they all kind of go together, but discharge superheat is not thought of as much, but it's just as important as anything else. One of the most common reasons we run a high discharge pressure and temperature is because crap is dirty. That's the most likely cause because it's the simplest cause. The filter was dirty, but dirty Walmart filters, I mean, they don't, they're not very restrictive unless they get extremely dirty. So we're gonna take a look up at the coil and see how it looks. Coil looks pretty good. too bad at all. Probably just not enough air. We'll see how much air flow we have. There's a little bit. Well, I guess we satisfied. What I wanted to do, guys, we had a 14-inch duct going. It's a two-ton machine, which is adequate. Return back here and a return right off the base of the unit. So it should have plenty of airflow. It was on high speed. I put the static pressure sensor up here in the duct just to make sure and yeah, we're fine. It's uh, no issues there. So most likely the issue was either a slight overcharge from my prior fill up, which I would hope not, but you know, cooling and heating, there's a lot of years on this machine. Uh, perhaps something got unbalanced along the way, which is definitely possible. Um, the coil's not dirty. The head pressure should not be elevated as a, just, a, we'll say a minor amount of dirt, just minuscule. So that should be fine. 
as you see, yeah, our static's great. It's just, there's no problem there. Even on one side, if we doubled that and said the return side was, you know, 20 is uh, 0.20 as well, that's still below 0.5, which is good. So we're looking at either maybe a restricted orifice to a certain degree, restricted capillary tube coming off the orifice, or just a slight overcharge. And plus we're now warming up inside and warming up outside, so we're going to be in the 70s, so our heating pressures are going to be a little bit elevated anyway. Our grills upstairs are closed off, even though our static wasn't bad. I'm going to see if I can open these grills up and see if that helps us out a little bit. With the There's pressure. some fluctuation there, but it is definitely lower than before. So all three grills upstairs were closed. I'm surprised our static was that low. So we'll see. We'll go outside and see if it made any difference to the operation of the machine. We have an amp rating of 10.5. Our discharge line temperature is 214, which is extremely high. It's getting up into the danger zone as far as compressor destruction. Pressure around 325, so it kind of topped off right there. I can't imagine what it would be right now if we had not opened the three grills inside. And we're looking at you know right around 60 pounds of suction. 60 pounds of suction. We have a 75 degree suction line temperature. And that puts us there about you know, we got about 40 degrees of superheat. So a lot of superheat out there on both ends of the system. Could be restricted orifice. Definitely could be restricted orifice. So 15-year-old machine, it's a difficult call trying to investigate something like that because it's almost not worth it let it run its course, but it's going to be an energy hog for sure. So what I'm going to do is run it for a few more minutes and switch it into AC and see how it runs that way. That'll give us a little bit better picture and it's warm enough where we can do that today. Here we are looking at the ream charging instructions. The bottom set only goes into an outdoor ambient of 37 degrees, but at 37 degrees with 70 inside, which is where we're at, at 37 is 235 pounds so it's feasible that we would be in the upper 200s to around 300 on a very warm day but the chart does not go up that high the suction pressure chart above that if we are at 60 the outdoor ambient at but well it only goes up to 62 at 62 at the suction pressure of 60 our returning temperature is 56 now our returning temperature is in the 70s so if we assume that since every time we go up a step on that chart it goes up four or more degrees at 70 degrees we would be around well we'd be around 64 which is still a little bit lower than where we are now so we shall see i'm going to turn it into cooling mode give us a little bit better of a look at the charging aspect of it and we'll run it in cool and see how she looks there guys i was just working on that ream unit and everything was going well not great head pressure was way too high suction pressure was too low um almost like a restricted orifice Static pressure was low. We even opened up those last three grills. The static pressure was you know, well within what you would call good airflow. Blower was set on high speed. I'd done that previously. No apparent issues with airflow. So that lends itself to either, you know, was the coil dirty? It wasn't that dirty. Of course, coils can be dirtier than they appear, but usually that's uh, condenser coils where that's a real big problem. So maybe there is a little bit of uh, debris in the piston. I did not see a dryer in the system anywhere. If uh, I, I might have missed it, but I didn't see any dryer, so it could be an issue where the system just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But when the machine is 15 years old, just as many people say, just let it ride till it dies. Um, because going through the whole spiel about orifice being blocked, people are like, well, you know, it's still working, you know. But I went to put it in the defrost and hit the test pins and put it in the defrost and all of a sudden lights out. Fuse blew in the simple comfort thermostat and once I put I put another fuse in, I took the fuse out of that because I didn't have another uh, cylinder fuse to go into the simple comfort stat. So I put a piece of wire there, I hacked it and I put another car type fuse in, in line and it actually blew the transformer. Um, so whatever it was had happened when it tried to switch into defrost, it just shut off. So I set everything up. Well, actually, before it blew the transformer, I had it set up. I put it in cooling, and it went back into cooling. I was like, okay. I turned it off. I turned the fan on and off, and it, you know it came on and off. Then I put in the heating and pop. 
So the only difference between heating and cooling are a couple items. Auxiliary heat, which I don't think actually even came on yet. It doesn't come on in tandem, I don't think. Or the reversing valve. Since it all happened we went into defrost, I'm going to start with either the defrost board itself or the reversing valve solenoid. But I had to pick up some parts because I didn't actually have any more transformers. I ran out. So I'm going to Johnstone in the morning, Saturday morning, to pick up some transformers. And I don't know if they'll have a compatible reversing valve solenoid. I don't even know if I'll pick one up until I make sure that's what it is. The only thing it is, I might pick up a defrost board because I could use a re defrost board uh, energizing and heating side. So. Okay, guys, I'm going to go check the mail and I have to go find a leak on that GAM 5 and 15 seer train split system that I did the EEV and EVC board change out on uh, a week or two ago. So, check you later. Meanwhile, the next morning. Good morning, guys. I'm at our REAM unit here on this nice, bright Saturday, and it blew a fuse while I was working on it before. So I came back with some more fuses, had to get a transformer, and realized I set everything up. I brought the zebra stat outside, and it blew a fuse when I was in defrost, and then again when I put it in heat. Since this is a REAM, one of the main differences between heat and cooling is that it, the reversing valve is energized in heating instead of cooling. So I took out the reversing valve wire, tested it, and this is the blue wire going for the reversing valve, going from here to common and we measured less than an ohm so it is shorted to common there so I got to figure out where along the line that this happened. Guys I have my reversing valve wire separated here at the air handler I tested this wire here to our grounds or uh, commons which are here and I tested the other one to our commons and this one showed less than one ohm and this one tracks back to the condenser so somewhere in that wire we've had it shorted out so I'm going to see if I can change wires and see if that will solve the problem. Guys, I took my blue wire off that was going to the reversing valve, switch it to orange, which showed no continuity to ground. So we're going to start things back up and see if that did the trick. We have our system set back into heat. It is running. The unit shut off outside, but the machine is running, which is a good sign. So I'm going to put everything back together, start it up into heat, and make sure everything's squared away. We have our new transformer right there mounted. The other one's kind of a pain in the ass to get out, so I just left it there. Hacked it up. So I put a new transformer right here and got a fuse over here for that. So let's see if she'll run in heating mode like she's supposed to. It looks like she will. Okay, guys, we have the DAFM3. I'm setting it up here. We have a 20 by 20 grill. So that gives us 280 inches if we go with 0.7. A lot of times they're 0.68 for these grills. But I'm going to do benefit of the doubt. So we'll see. We have another return coming from upstairs, but it's just a small 8-inch return running a long way, so we're not going to get much air out of that one. It counts now. We're going to start. Gives us 30 seconds to go across the grill. So I kind of put about seven and a half seconds on each um, row of fins. Right there we have 555. So with our return upstairs, we should have no problem being a 10 and a half system. to make sure this is a ton and a half. It might be two tons. If so, we'll, we'll be a little short on air. two-ton system and we're still short on air. Our static is so low we should not have a problem getting the air required and maybe an issue with the blower itself. So blowers can weaken over time and become less productive. Not exactly common but there's reasoning behind not getting enough air if we have sufficient airflow through the system. So I'll see. Uh, I believe this is a two-ton air handler. We'll take a look at it. Discharge temperature. 
pressure is amperage. We're running in defrost now. Before, we ran for a couple seconds and then kablooey. So a low voltage fuse, so we're going to let it run now. We've already, we've already been much more successful than before now. So we'll let it run its course and we'll put it in AC and check the charge. Alright guys, I got it around a about around 80 degrees condensing temperature 145 or so there's a little bit of fluctuation on that just over 50 so around 28 degrees so we're looking right around 20 degrees of superheat and about 10 degrees of subcoin which is good as far as superheat and subcoin goes we are within parameters basically I still think it almost be, might be a question of the system never had a dryer. It might need a dryer installed in it. might have a little bit of debris as far as non condensable debris inside. That would explain some of our high head. But, but like I said, it's 15 years old, coming to the close of its life. Changing out refrigerant and putting in a dryer in is a good idea, but it might not be one that's going to be accepted. So we'll see. Alright guys. I will see you guys on the next one.